How reliable is our understanding of time, especially when it pertains to the age of our planet and its ancient inhabitants? Let's delve into the world of radiocarbon dating, a remarkable scientific method that has revolutionized our comprehension of historical and archaeological studies. Imagine you're a scientist, and you've just unearthed an ancient piece of wood or bone. You're curious about the age of your discovery. How do you find out? You can't exactly ask it, can you? That's where radiocarbon dating comes into the picture. Radiocarbon dating, also known as carbon-14 dating, is a method used by scientists to determine the age of organic material. This technique relies on the principle of radioactivity, the spontaneous decay of unstable atomic nuclei over time. Carbon-14 is a naturally occurring radioactive isotope of carbon that is formed in the atmosphere and absorbed by living organisms. When an organism dies, it stops absorbing carbon-14 but the isotope continues to decay at a known rate. By measuring the ratio of carbon-14 to stable carbon-12 in a sample, and comparing it to the ratio in a living organism, we can estimate when the organism died and thus, the age of the sample. This method has been widely used by scientists to date organic materials like wood, bone and shells, providing valuable insights into the history of life on Earth. It has helped us to piece together timelines, trace human evolution, and understand climate changes throughout history. Radiocarbon dating has been instrumental in archaeology and paleoanthropology, allowing us to peer back into time and unravel the mysteries of our past. It has shed light on the age of the earliest human settlements, the rise and fall of civilizations, and the evolution of species. But like any other scientific method, radiocarbon dating is not without its limitations and criticisms. As we journey further into this discussion, we'll examine these limitations and criticisms and explore the reliability of radiocarbon dating. Because while it's a powerful tool, it's also important to understand its boundaries and the controversies that surround it. Radiocarbon dating isn't the only method scientists use to determine the age of objects and materials. In fact, the world of dating techniques is as diverse as it is intricate, offering a multitude of ways to unlock the secrets of the past. One such method is dendrochronology or tree ring dating. This technique hinges on the simple fact that trees add a ring to their trunk for every year of their life. By examining these rings, scientists can not only determine the age of the tree but also gain insights into the climate conditions of the past. Unlike radiocarbon dating which requires a certain level of radioactive carbon in the material, dendrochronology can date objects without this requirement. This makes it an excellent method for dating ancient wooden artifacts or historical buildings. Next we have thermoluminescence, a technique that dates archaeological artifacts by measuring the energy they've absorbed from the environment over time. When these materials are heated, they release this energy in the form of light, which can be measured to determine their age. This method is particularly useful when it comes to dating pottery or other heat-altered materials, providing a window into the world of our ancestors that radiocarbon dating simply can't. Then there is potassium-argon dating, a method that relies on the decay of potassium-40 to argon-40. This technique is an absolute dating method, meaning it can provide an exact age for a material, something radiocarbon dating often struggles with. Potassium-argon dating is especially useful for dating very old archaeological materials, often reaching back millions of years. These are just a few examples of the myriad of dating methods that scientists employ to unravel the tapestry of time. Each offers a unique perspective and a different set of tools to tackle the challenges of determining the age of objects and materials. While these methods offer different perspectives, they also have their own set of limitations. But that's a topic for another time. For now, let's revel in the fact that we have so many ways to explore and understand our world's rich and complex past. Despite its widespread use, radiocarbon dating has its fair share of limitations. Let's delve deeper into those limitations now. First and foremost, radiocarbon dating has an upper limit. It can only accurately date materials up to about 50,000 years old. Beyond that, the amount of the radioactive carbon-14 isotope in a sample becomes too minuscule to measure, rendering the technique ineffective for dating older artifacts or geological formations. Secondly, radiocarbon dating relies heavily on the environment. The amount of carbon-14 in the atmosphere, for instance, hasn't always been constant. It varies due to factors such as solar activity and changes in the Earth's magnetic field. That means the ratio of carbon-14 to the stable carbon-12 can fluctuate, which can skew dating results. For example, a creature that died during a period of high atmospheric carbon-14 would appear younger than it truly is. Furthermore, 
Contamination can also be a significant problem. If a sample has been exposed to organic materials, or even just the carbon in our air, it can alter the ratio of carbon isotopes and lead to inaccurate dates. This is why rigorous pretreatment processes are employed to ensure the sample's purity. The third limitation is the assumptions radiocarbon dating makes about the past. It presumes that the rate of carbon-14 production has been constant over time. It also assumes that the ratio of carbon-14 to carbon-12 in a living organism would have been the same as the ratio in the atmosphere at the time of its death. These assumptions, while generally reasonable, may not always hold true. Lastly, it's crucial to remember that radiocarbon dating is just one tool in the archaeologist's toolbox. It provides an estimated date range, not an exact calendar date. Therefore, it's often used in conjunction with other dating methods to corroborate findings and refine estimates. These limitations underscore the need for caution when interpreting radiocarbon dating results. When used thoughtfully and critically, however, radiocarbon dating remains a profoundly valuable tool for uncovering the mysteries of our past. Over the years, radiocarbon dating has faced numerous criticisms. One of the main criticisms is the potential for discrepancies in results. Despite the precise science behind it, radiocarbon dating can sometimes yield inconsistent and unpredictable results, casting doubts over its accuracy. For instance, different laboratories may produce different dates for the same sample. This discrepancy often arises due to variations in laboratory techniques, equipment, and even the physical condition of the sample. Another significant criticism the impact of atmospheric changes on radiocarbon dating. The amount of carbon-14 in the atmosphere has fluctuated significantly over the past 50,000 years due to factors such as solar activity and changes in the Earth's magnetic field. These fluctuations can lead to inaccuracies in radiocarbon dating, making it less reliable for certain periods. The debate over calibration is another sticking point. Radiocarbon dates are often calibrated to adjust for changes in the atmospheric carbon-14 levels over time. However, the calibration process itself is a subject of controversy. Some scientists argue that the calibration curves are based on assumptions and can introduce additional uncertainties into the results. For example, the calibration curves rely on tree ring data, but the relationship between carbon-14 and tree rings is not fully understood and may not be consistent over time. Another controversy involves the so-called old wood problem. This occurs when the wood used in an artifact is much older than the artifact itself. In such cases, radiocarbon dating can give misleadingly old dates. Although this issue is well known, it can be difficult to avoid in practice. Finally, there's the issue of contamination. Any contamination of a sample by modern carbon can drastically alter its radiocarbon age. Even minute amounts of contamination can lead to inaccurate dates, making it critical to handle and process samples with extreme care. These criticisms add another layer of complexity to the interpretation of radiocarbon dating results. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit the notification bell to keep up with our latest videos. With all these criticisms and limitations, how reliable is radiocarbon dating? This question has echoed through the halls of science for decades. But let's put this into perspective. Despite its criticisms and limitations, radiocarbon dating remains an invaluable tool in our quest to understand the past. This method has given us insights into human history, climate changes, and evolution that no other technique could provide. Radiocarbon dating like any scientific method is not flawless. It requires calibration, and it has a limited range, typically up to 50,000 years. These are known factors that scientists are aware of and work with. They conduct multiple tests, use different samples, and cross-reference results with other dating methods to ensure the most accurate results. This method is not a standalone tool, but part of a larger toolbox. It's used in conjunction with other dating techniques, archaeological evidence, and historical records. This multi-pronged approach helps to offset some of the limitations of radiocarbon dating and increases its reliability. Also, the science of radiocarbon dating continues to evolve. Improvements in technology and methodology are constantly being made. These advancements help to refine the process, making it more accurate and extending its range. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit the notification bell to keep up with our latest videos.